Hello and welcome. I'm Laura Brody, and I've been wanting to make a mask that has a clear window that'll show off my smile and lets folks read my lips. In this video, I'm going to show you the version of the mask that I've come up with. There will be a link down below so you can download the PDF of the pattern and the instructions. It's a little bit complicated, but not too bad. It does require a sewing machine. Now, the first time that I tried to make this mask, I ended up with a clear window that was a little too wide and narrow, and it kind of looked like a frog. The second time I did this, which was too big all the way around, and it keeps bumping my nose. So hopefully the third time will be the charm. If you don't have time to test this stuff out, or you just really don't want to make it, it's okay. There are some clear window masks available on the market, and I'll show you some links to good ones down below too. I prepped and pre-cut all of my pieces. This is the clear insert for the mouth. These are the elastic for the ear loops, the twill tape to finish out the sides, the twist ties so I can make the nose shape fit over my nose, and then the fabric. I used a heavier duty canvas on the outside and two layers of cotton sheeting on the inside, stacked them all together, drew around the pattern, and then cut all three pieces out at once. To prep for sewing, I laid out the canvas and one layer of the backing and fold the mask in half, just like that, so that the backing side is showing up. Do the same thing for the lining. I'm going to sew the darts at the top and the bottom of the mask together, backstitching at each edge and at the bottom. top and bottom. I will then do the same thing to the lining. Open up the seams and press them out with my fingernails. And look, all my stripes kind of match up. I will do the same thing to the lining. I'm going to lay it out with the canvas side up and then the lining on top here with the seam size out. So we're doing outsides together, insides up, and then match all of my seams and pin everything together. I'm going to pin both the tops and the bottoms and sew those and leave the sides open. Once everything is pinned together, I'm going to just sew the tops and the bottoms of the mask. Once it's sewn, I will take out my pins and then Turn this right side round by pulling through the mouth hole and then press open the seams again using my fingernails so the lining is to one side and the outside is to the other. Turn it all so I'm going to the inside of the mask and press it again also using my fingernails to get everything to hopefully line up. I'm going to now pin all of the edges of that mouth opening together as smoothly as I possibly can. This will all get zigzagged together and then that clear plastic insert will go inside. I set my machine to a short tight zigzag. Now I'm going to zigzag all the way around the mouth opening. I try to get it as neat as I can. If your mouth opening looks a little bit fuzzy like mine does, don't worry about it. You can always trim off that excess. Take your twist tie. I folded mine in half so that it'd be a little bit stronger. And then I'm feeding it in between the layers on the top. The top edge is the one with a slightly shorter dart. You can see it, it's labeled on the pattern. And then I'm feeding it up so it'll be right at the top, centered over that dart. Eventually, this is going to go over my nose. And the twist tie will help keep it shaped. Once the twist tie is in there, 
and pinning it so it stays right up close to the edge and stays centered. I'm going to then pin the rest of this edge. So we're going to stitch this down so the twist tie stays. And also so it's a lot clearer what is top and what is bottom on the mask. I reset the machine to a straight stitch. Now I'm going to sew this about three-eighths of an inch from the edge all the way around on the top. I'm going to go really slowly once I get to the area with the twist tie because I would prefer not to hit it in the wire with a needle. Although the worst thing that would happen would mean my needle would break and I have to replace it. No big deal. Once I've stitched the top, I also decided to stitch the bottom, but I did it at a slightly different width so you could tell the top and bottom apart more easily. Now I'm going to pin in my clear plastic window. I made little marks at top and bottom where the half points are so I know where to line them up with the darts. This is the slightly tricky part. So depending on the type of vinyl or plastic you have, it might be easier or harder to pin it to the mask. Just take some time. It's worth it. You can see this is pinned all the way around from the inside, but I can see through the plastic to see where the old stitching line is. I'm going to actually go back in and try to sew on the old stitching line. No worries if I don't get it immediately. If I have to go back and unpick a couple seams, that's cool. You can see to sew on the zigzag. And if I need to, as I'm going around, I will take out the pins as I sew, maybe right before I get to them. When I'm finished sewing, it looks like this on the inside and this on the outside. So if I want to get really fancy, I can always cover all that stitching with a piece of ribbon or trim. I'll take this piece of elastic and pin it to one side, sort of facing inward toward the mouth opening. Take the other side, pin it down too, to form a loop. When this is sewn, we'll be able to uh, slip over my ear. I'll take the piece of twill tape that I have, one of them, and pin it over there, over the elastic and the side. So this will finish off the side and hold the elastic down really nice and securely. It also makes it pretty easy to, if I need to replace the ear loops, I can always get in there and redo it pretty easily. Once that's pinned on, I can zigzag the twill tape down and the elastic down all in one. Once I've sewn one side, I'll prep and sew the second side. Seam rippers make handy little pointy tools if you need to uh, tuck in loose ends. So once you've done and clipped all of your threads, you can test fit it by shaping the twist tie over your nose, putting the ear loops over your ears, and voila, you've got a fitted mask with a clear window you can see through. There are things you can do to make this a little more comfy. You can try using thin strips of spandex, like half inch wide. It's a little, instead of the elastic, it's a little softer. There's anti-fogging spray that you can put on the inside. You can also do things like apparently a thin film of toothpaste will work. I'm guessing the gel kind. People suggested soap. I think I'd end up with a soapy mouth. You can try the old scuba diving technique, which is when you spit on the inside and do a thin film of the spit and let it dry. I know it sounds gross, but we're not supposed to be sharing our masks anyway. So there you go. Thank you so much for joining me and look below for all the information you need and to download the pattern and instructions. See you next time.